Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. I want to welcome every one of us to God's presence tonight. Um, I want to thank God for your life for bringing you here tonight to come and share with us God's word. This is Amable Men of Honor Bible Study Broadcast. We have these um, broadcasts every Saturday. And what we do is that we study some scriptures and after studying them most times about two chapters of the scriptures we come in on sunday and we share it together so for me to know that you're live with me i will appreciate if you you can just comment or send an emoji let me just know that you're following so i want to welcome you to god's presence tonight um before we go on apologies i have to use a headset there's a very loud party <laughs> going you know from you know in my neighborhood my neighbor is i don't know i think dedicating a child and is so loud so i needed to use this ATS at least i can keep some of the noise away so i want to welcome you to god's presence um we're going to have a time of worship and then we'll go straight into the study father i want to thank you for tonight I want to appreciate you for all that you have done for all you have been to us for the grace and the opportunity to see another day, another Saturday in your presence. And by your grace, we are seeing the last day of July. We do not take, you know, this privilege for granted. It's only by you, O oh Lord, that we will have been that we have been sustained, that we would have we have been able to make this day. We are very grateful, Lord, and we thank you. Receive our thanksgiving, O oh God. Receive our praise, mighty God, in Jesus' mighty name. Father, we pray that as we go into your word, we pray that the eyes of our understanding be open, that we behold the wondrous thing out of your law. The Bible says your faithfulness are new every morning. Lord, reveal to us new things, fresh word from your throne of grace. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Let us sing a song of worship to give God praise. You are how far. <coughs> And Omega, we worship you, our God. You are worthy to be praised. We give you all the glory. We worship you. Our God, you are worthy to be praised. I want us to sing this song too. It's not a song of worship, it's a song of declaration. It says, I've got my mind made up and I won't turn back because I want to see my Jesus someday. I've got my mind made up and I won't turn back because I want to see my Jesus someday. Goodbye world, I stay no longer with you. Goodbye pleasures of sin. I stay no longer with you. I've made up my mind to go God's way. The rest of my life and I've made up my mind to go God's way the rest of my life amen you're wondering why we're singing that song it's because of what we're studying tonight that's why the you know we just had to sing you know that that lovely song saying goodbye world goodbye pleasures of sin I stay no longer with you today we're studying 2 Corinthians 5 chapter 5 and chapter 6 so we're going to just take some few verses from the two chapters and just learn some some lessons you know from from those chapters so let's read from second corinthians chapter 5 that's where we're going to start from we're going to read from verse 1 second corinthians chapter 5 and verse 1 um that scripture was talking about the new bodies god is going to give to us so I'll just read some of the verses and then we go on. He said, For we know that if our earthly house, this tent, is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in heaven. For in this we groan earnestly, designed to be clothed 
with the habitation which is from heaven. If indeed, having been clothed, we shall not be found naked. Um, for we who are, verse 4, for we who are in this tent grown, being body, not because we want to be unclothed, but for the cloth, that mortality may be swallowed up by life. Now, he who has prepared for us this very thing is God, who also has given us the Spirit as a guarantee. So Paul was, you know, trying to talk about the fact that this, our physical body, you know, man is, is a tripartite being. According to Second Thessalonians, it says that man is a spirit that lives in a body, so that has a soul and lives in the body. We are a tripartite being. So the Bible was saying to Thessalonians, and he said that your spirit, your soul, and your body be pre pre presented blameless until the, until the day of the Lord. So he's trying to say that as human being, as you are sitting down or you're standing wherever you are right now, you are a you are a spirit you have a soul and you live in the body now what we found that that happened is that most of us concentrate so much on the body we spend so much time you know trying to look after our body trying to make sure the body is okay the body is fine we feed it good food we wear it good we wear it good um good clothes you know we take care of it rub it good cream but then we forget that we have a soul that also needs to be nourished and a spirit that needs to be maintained. Praise the Lord. So Paul was trying to say that these our temporary bodies will not last forever while we live in them as believers. For us as believers, we know that this body that we have, it will not last forever. We're not going to be in the body. Even if you live 200 years, maybe you say, I live now 100 and something years. And at the end of the day, he still died. He still dropped this physical body and his spirit went, you know, to be with God. So our our... Our physical body, these eyes, nose, ears, and everything that, that we're seeing, the mouth, the brain, everything, they are all temporary. They are just there for us to have, you know, for a temporary time. But we should not forget that our body is housing the spirit and the soul. So the one that needs the most attention, you understand, is actually our spirit. We need to fill our souls with the engrafted word of God. A preacher said, and I like quoting that, I still said it sometimes in church last week, you know, the preacher said, many of us, we feed our body three hot meals every day, as in breakfast, lunch, and dinner. We're doing it, we're eating, you know, good food, morning, you give yourself nice breakfast, lunch, dinner. Some people, don't, they will eat um, what they call, you know, in between meals. You take snack, you take breaks, and you take tea breaks and all that. But then your spirit can go on seven days, five days, nothing going into it. The preacher said you feed your body three hot meals and feed your spirit one cold snack on Sunday. And by one cold snack, it means that you go to church, the pastor is preaching, probably you're going to a church that, you know, they're not even serving you the correct word, or you even get here the correct word, but you're not, you're not relaxing, you're not hearing it, you're not letting it come into you. You understand what I'm trying to say? That's the way some of us, we can spend days without reading our Bibles, we can st spend days without studying the Word of God, we can spend days without prayer, you understand? And But every day we make sure we eat something. So, Paul was trying to tell us that we should, we should, be, we should not forget that this body, that body that we're looking after, you understand, is temporal. It's not, it's not something that will last forever. And, you know, that being said, many of us can spend, we can make hair, we can buy bone straight of 140,000 but we don't have anything spiritual that is of that value. We can wear lace, you know, of 500,000. But you can't buy a Bible of 5,000. The last time we were trying to get a Bible, a very nice Bible, I think it was Dick's Bible. They were selling it for 30 something thousand. I'm like, what? We used to buy this Bible 4,000 before. But you know, buying a 30 something thousand Bible might look like a big deal for us. But then, if they bring this actually maybe and it's fifty thousand, we might be able to cough it up. I'm not saying I'm not trying to judge us or anything, but I'm just trying to say that we need to place more premium on the things that goes into our spirit, on things that go into our soul, the things that develop us. Because this body that we're living in is is temporal. And you know, Paul was trying to say that see, this this body that we have, even when it goes away, we are confident of where we are going. So that, that, that was in verse 6 to 10. It was, it was trying to say that being, being in our present body is at this moment presenting us from being with the Lord. 
So if we are still alive, we are in our bodies, and it, it could prevent, of course, it's preventing us from being with the Lord as it were spiritually. And when we leave this body, our going to heaven is gain. Now, because the reason is because God has prepared a place for us. He has prepared a body. That's what he told us. There is pre pre so even if you are you are here in this life and you are like, oh, my eyes is one is not okay. My nose is not pointed, and you are not happy with that. By the time we are transformed, by the time we are we are changed, you are going to have a perfect body with no blemish, no stain. You know, maybe you wanted to be a fair person. You are just going to be glowing like the sun when we move. And you know, some of these things are the reason why, as believers, you know, we are we don't mourn like unbeliever when somebody is a believer and is a child of god and dies we don't just lose hope and say oh this my loved one has gone and i can't see him again forever because we know that even when a loved one dies the person is being transformed that person is going to be with the lord so it's just it's just it encourages us to know that even when we're here we're not present with the lord but when we were translated we're present with the lord in the body amen now um, because one of the joy of being reconciled back to God is that we have an assurance of eternity with Him. When you're born again and you love and serve the Lord, you're sure that you're going to heaven. You're super certain and sure that heaven is your home. So you're not sad. You're not. You're not. You're not losing hope. But the plan of God is that we live very good old age, you know, fulfilled days on earth, and that will be our portion in Jesus' mighty name. Now, the other side of this scripture, Second Corinthians five. You know, and the and the and the fact that Paul was emphasizing on the fact that we are we are living here temporarily is that that knowledge of this place being temporary, it it compels us to tell people about God. You know, there's a way people can live their life. There's a way people can live their life as if everything ends here. You know, everything ends on this earth. After our death, then there's nothing. But the Bible tells us that it is appointed for man to die but once. But after the, after death then there is judgment. We know that there is an after now. And because we know that there is a judgment awaiting those people that don't give their life to Jesus, He compels us. You know, one thing I've noticed is that there are so many people that we love and appreciate and we don't want to, you know, bug them. Let me use that word. You don't want to bug them with this, you know, with the gospel. You're like, ah, this person's life is already perfect. We all have them as colleagues. They're even doing better than you. They have it all together. You know, you have them as friends, family members. You understand? The, the, everybody is just, ah, look, oh, this person is cool. He doesn't, everybody is appreciating them. But the person is not born again. You need to know that whatever that person has is ephemeral. We are, we are, we are all old enough to see things happen. Somebody is here today, he's not there tomorrow again. So everything the person has, everything that you love about the person, the skill, the knowledge, maybe the career, the elegance, you love about that person. If the person dies, that's the end of it. The only way you can see the person again or the life of that person can count after this ephemeral life is for the person to be born again. So it's, it's you know, that knowledge of the temporality of life will make us, you know, be compelled to, to talk to people, to win them to Christ, to bring them to the saving knowledge of the Son of God. Let's read from 2 Corinthians 5, 16 and 18. And, and then we just get, you know, some truth from that place as well. Second Corinthians 5, 16 and 18. Paul was saying, he said, Therefore, after all these things that we have said, from now on we regard no one according to the flesh. Even though we have known Christ according to the flesh, yet now we know him thus no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, is a new creature, all things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. This is one of the scriptures we learned earlier on. Now, talking about the fact that, you know, knowing somebody as in flesh, knowing somebody in flesh is not, is not really, you know, so much of a big deal. Knowing somebody like, ah, I know this person. What really counts is that the person is a child of God. Because the Bible was saying in that verse, it said, if any man is in Christ, he's a new creature. Now, there's some of us that we, we, we love our whole life. Let me put it that way. You like that life you have without Christ. Or maybe you don't even like it. But whatever it is, that life does not count anymore. That was what Paul was saying. That We don't know anybody according to the flesh again. You understand? We know people because they are now in Christ and they're a new creature. So maybe if you knew somebody that was a and I'm robber because we Christian we have that issue. Let me even use very close example. You know, a lady she was a, a prostitute, 
you know, on the streets, you know, following the guys and living our life. And then when they become believers, you don't, you don't, you don't, you don't, you don't, you're wondering like, ah, and this one in the same faith with me, no, now, this one cannot be as born again as I am. My sister, she is as born again as you are because she's a child of God. If any man is in Christ, the Bible says that person is a new creature. The person is a new creature. He's no longer the prostitute you know again. He's no longer the thief you know again. He's no longer the liar you know again. The person is a new person. And for you too, as well, some of us live under the condemnation of our whole life. No. As soon as you're born again, you're already a child of God. You're already, you're already a new person. Praise the Lord. You're already a new person. And, you know, the last part of that scripture is the verse 19 to 21. Talking about that, having now been reconciled, we have now been given a ministry we have not been given a ministry of condemnation. Yes, somebody is commenting and saying that we don't take those kind of people serious and then we judge them. That's true, Auntie Bimbo. Sometimes we, we find ourselves, you know, not taking people serious. That this person, uh, I used to know him. No, no, no. When a man is in Christ, he's a new person. Everything the person has done in the past does not matter again. As a matter of fact, is is a is something we call kinos is a new is a new speechy never been before is a totally new person and we have to really recognize that with people and not look at them with the eyes of the old person or look at our own selves and keep living under the judgment of who we were before we know christ we know christ and now we are new amen so i was saying that the 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 last part of the of the scripture was talking about you know now that we have been reconciled we have not been given the ministry of reconciliation my people you know i know that we're very busy i'm talking to yourself as much as i'm talking to me we have been given a ministry of reconciliation all those people in the world god wants to reconcile them to 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 himself i know sometimes we want god to kill them and judge them for being wrong but the truth of the matter the bible says god wants every man to come to knowledge of the saving grace of the son he wants everybody to be born again every bad person you know some of us we pray for the death of the politicians and our leaders yes but let me tell you god wants them to be born again he doesn't want anybody no matter how bad they are to be to be condemned that's why christ came to die the bible says for god so loved the world Everybody that he gave his only begotten to that whosoever believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. Every single one of us, every single one of us, we need to, we need to, um, you know, come to the saving knowledge of the grace of God. And that's what Christ died for. No matter where the person is, whether the person is uh, Boko Haram or the person is uh, whatever it is in some northern part, God wants that person to be saved. And, you know, my prayer for you and for me and for every one of us today is that that, that, that passion, that God will rekindle it in our hearts in Jesus' name. A lot of us had it before. You know, you're, when you see people that are not born again, you feel for them. But now, a lot of, the, a lot of us, we, we even envy them that, child, if me to know, we say I'm born again like this, eh? Mr. for the rock, like these people, they rock. Eh, ha, for they enjoy, you understand? But you don't know that they have a sorry life, to put in quotes. A life without Jesus Christ. The Bible says, no Jesus, no, I mean, sorry, the adage. That no Jesus, no life. You don't have Jesus, there's no life. Whatever life you think they're enjoying, you know, the devil can come at any time and mess up their life because they, are, they, they belong to him. But when they come to the saving knowledge of the, the grace of God and they become born again, then they now start enjoying life because Jesus said in John 10, 10 He said, I have come to give you life and life abundantly. That's when you now enjoy real life when you're in Christ Jesus. So I just want to encourage us. Let's take the ministry of reconciliation seriously. You understand? Sometimes I just laugh. When some people condemn uh, some Christians, some ministers of God, I just I say, Those people are about winning souls. You, since you've been a Christian, you've not won any soul. You have not brought anybody to the knowledge of God. Do you think in front of God, you will be like, Ah, you okay? Just keep condemning and judging. Whereas these people are doing great and they're bringing people to the to the son of. So let's take, you know, our ministry of con reconciliation very seriously. I pray that the grace to do that, God will not, God will give to us in Jesus' mighty name. I was trying to talk about you know another scripture here, Second Corinthians, um, Second Corinthians chapter six and verse one to three um, is the next scripture we're going to read. Um, Second Corinthians. Six, um, yes, so he was saying, Paul was saying in that chapter six, second Corinthians six, he said, We then, as workers together with him, you know, he was talking about say, having the ministry of reconciliation. He said, We then, as workers together with him, also plead with you not to receive the grace of God in vain. For he says, 
in an acceptable time I have heard you, and in day of salvation I have helped you. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. So you're just trying to say, don't tell, don't tell that your friend, don't tell that your uncle that uh, when we meet during Christmas, I'll tell him about Jesus. Oh, that my friend, tomorrow, tomorrow. The Bible is saying in that place that now it's it's is the time, is the day of salvation. Any day the Holy Spirit drops them in your heart or you feel led to talk to them, that is their day of salvation. Don't say that she's still a small girl, she's a teenager. You understand? When when she's older, she will understand life. She will come to she will come to God. Let me tell you, we are co-workers with God, and the desire of God is that the grace of God that we have received as salvation, we do not take that grace in vain. We don't take it in vain. Some of us we are we have grown fat. In the in the house of God, we are eating and drinking. Hey, thank God for Nepal. <laughs> so we are eating and drinking and enjoying. You know, in 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 the in the house of God, we are growing fat, and we are not we are not, you know, bearing fruit. We are not bringing others to Christ. You are like somebody that had a child and, you know, that child is eating all the food alone and the child is not bringing in another child and all of those things. Praise the Lord. The desire of God is that we bring forth, we bring forth, we grow, we mature. A man of God was saying, you know, something that I was listening to, you know, sometimes over the week. And he was saying that God, what God does is that when there's a vacuum in God's kingdom, he puts us there. When we fill that vacuum, he moves us up. And as soon as he moves us up, there's another vacuum created. So we don't take the grace of God in vain and just sit and not grow and not move and not mentor others and not bring others to the saving knowledge of the grace of God. So we, we are not supposed to, you know, take the grace of God for granted because the, fear, the fearful thing there is that we have to give account. We have to give account of our life. We have to give account of the grace we have received. Some of us have been blessed with so many things, so many gifts, so many talents. You understand? So many talents. You can sing, you can dance, you can pray, you can preach, you can evangelize, you can clean church, you can... And you're not doing all of those things. No, God expects us not to take His grace in vain, but to use it to bring others to the saving knowledge of the... However you can. You might not be... A, some people can't talk. They can't... Maybe you can't even talk to people and bring... Preach the gospel to them. But you can use your money. You know, we always say that in a maybe way of honor. When you use your money to print tracts, you don't talk or you just give it to people. You just give it to people. Or you use your money to sponsor, you know, programs and outreaches and evangelism and all of those things. You know, you are preaching the gospel of Christ with whatever you have. At least you're using whatever grace God has given to you. Praise the Lord. Now, Second Corinthians, Second Corinthians 6, 4 to 10. You know, Paul was talking about all the things he has gone through. Paul and his team were able to endure for the sake of the gospel. Afflictions, you know, they, they suffered for the sake of the same gospel that we too received though hey is um they they were there were times they were he was beaten there were times he was imprisoned there was a time he was attacked by angry mob sleepless nights hungry you know and he's doing all of that you understand no matter how he was treated that passion for the work of god you know go kept him going there's some of us when we go to preach to others when we go to preach to others we just and they abuse us Hmm. You just say, hey, it's not their fault. Is it because I brought myself low to come and be preaching to this one? If not, <laughs> if not for Jesus, you, can you stand me? Paul suffered more. You know, he was an accomplished man, you know, in, in, his, in his days. But he was ready to leave all of those things and he was suffering. Some of the people that were even punishing him were not even people that were even up to him. So, you know, he, he, he went through all of that. For the for the sake of of the gospel of Christ, he sleepless night. You remember when he was in the ship and the ship was there? before a ship, before a ship wants to capsize, the, the water will have moved there and all that. He went through all of that, you know, just for the, uh, just for the purpose, you know, of 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 preaching the gospel to others. He kept doing that. So we too, we are ambassadors of God for reconciliation. So that's the topic of our teaching today. I hope I said it earlier. You know, we are ambassadors for Christ. In the ministry of reconciliation ambassadors in the ministry of reconciliation and as ambassadors what is expected of us you know 
we are expected as ambassadors to represent the country we come from. And that's why I was trying to, it started, you know, Second Corinthians 5, by saying that, even though I'm here, I'm not a citizen of here, I'm a citizen of heaven. I'm a citizen of heaven. Whatever I'm doing here is temporary. And what I'm here to do, just like an ambassador that I sent to another country, is to preach the gospel. So no matter what it goes through in that country, well, it is my country that sent me here. And I, you know those soldiers now, all those soldiers, even though where they send them to, you know, it's not on their own, they probably would not have gone there. They would not endure all the hardship on the war front and everything. But they still they still do it for the sake of who has sent them. And, and, and that's what... Paul too was, was doing. When we receive the grace of God, you know, no matter what we are faced with, no matter the circumstance, no matter the, the hardship, you know, these are the days. In those days when we believe, they used to send people out of the house now when you become born again. As a matter of fact, even your born again parents will even persecute you because you are taking it too far. <laughs> Praise the Lord. But now, any little thing, ah, people are like, ah, no, now, you know, those days, so many women were sent out of their husbands out because they became born again. So many, we can't even count the number of, you know, children now because they received the gospel. Right now, people are like, ah, no, ah, I can't suffer. Oh, hey, my mommy, my mommy said I should not do this. My father, some people are even grown. They are not even staying with their parents, but then they, they still make that an excuse. Oh, this is where I've come from. Oh, uh, my parents don't like this. But in the days of Paul, he suffered so much. Him and all his team, they suffered a lot for the sake of the gospel. So when, whenever we're faced with any, any issue, we should just know and tell ourselves. We ask ourselves two questions. Number one, how may God be glorified in this situation? So whether you're being lied against, you're being persecuted, you're being oppressed, whatever it is, you ask yourself, number one, how may God be glorified in this situation? If you can answer the question, then you ask yourself again, how can this help to bring others to Christ? If that is not happening, then you're probably not suffering for, for Christ's sake. Amen. So, you know, because there are people that, you know, they suffer and they say, ah, I'm suffering for Christ. They probably say, no, no. You have to test it and make sure that you know that that suffering that you're doing is for the sake of Christ. Amen. Now, let's move on to 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 11 to 13. So, he was talking, he, uh, Paul, was, Paul was declaring, <coughs> excuse me, they have, that he declared that they have done nothing to cause the Corinthians to have anything against them, as they have been honest and plain with them. He requested them also to deal with, with him with open hearts as children relate towards their father. As children of God, we are to be open in our relationship with others. Our yes should be yes, our no should be no, and we should not be hypocritical. Praise the Lord. So Paul was talking, I think I would like to read that scripture. Let's just read it fast. Second Corinthians 6, 11 to 13. He said, O oh, Corinthians, we have spoken openly to you. Our heart is wide open. You are not restricted by us, but you are restricted by your own affections. You know, now in return for the same, I speak to, as to children. You also should be open as God's children. In our dealing with people, we need to be open. And open in the sense that you're not hiding anything in your relationship with people. Your yes is your yes. Your no is your no. It doesn't mean that probably you don't care about the affections of others or maybe their feelings and emotions and all of that. No. But there's nothing hiding. There's nothing hypocritical about you. And you know, as women, it's something that we find ourselves doing. Somebody will be there, you talk all jovially with them, and the person turns back and be like, oh, 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 praise the Lord. No, that's not something that God wants us to do. Our relationship with people, we should, that's the expectation of God, should be with open mind. Especially when we're even dealing with children of God are in the same fold. No, it's, it's you know, having double mind is not something that is acceptable to God. Amen. Now, he was still talking about, you know, our life as ambassadors for Christ. Now, he has talked about the fact that our bodies is temporary here. He has talked about the fact that as ambassadors of, you know, of the ministry of reconciliation, we're supposed to tell others about the gospel. As ambassadors, sometimes we need to suffer. Yes, we need to suffer. For the cause of Christ that we believed in. And then also in chapter 14, I mean verse 14 to 18, Paul was saying that even also as ambassadors, we are not to be unequally yoked with unbelievers. Amen. We should not be unequally yoked with unbelievers. Some people, their best friend is not a believer. Excuse me. <coughs> their best friend, that person they call Korikosun. 
he's not a Christian. So I'm in my mind I'm thinking, so how do you deal with issues? What do you talk about? You know, how do you I your friend that is not a believer, how, when you relate, what do you talk? I'm not saying you can you can have acquaintances, as a matter of fact, you can have friends that are not believers, but your closest friend, not being a believer, is something that gives me worry. Because what do you talk about? How do you handle issues? So take for example, if you, maybe you're believing God for a child, you need baby. Now, as a believer, you will tell yourself that you're waiting on God to do it and you're praying and doing everything. And then your unbeliever friend will tell you that, you know, this Baba, hmm, in Ijebu, that Baba is a, is one time powerful Baba. You understand? That's what happens when we find ourselves unequally yoked with unbeliever. And then the one that most people don't really want to hear about is the one that talks about marriage. You cannot marry a non-believer and it will work. Forget what anybody tells you. You see that you're managing it or you're compromising. Because even married to a believer is hard work on his own. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Mar the guy is good. Yeah, the man is okay. You know, but truly, how do you want to survive? How do you want to deal with issues? How do you want? I remember when I was single, I used to tell myself that, see, I want to marry a man that maybe if the child is sick, I'm saying, let us pray. The man say, let us go to hospital. Not that hospital is bad, though, but you know, somebody that you're in the same wave. A wave frequency, a frequency wave, the same spiritual frequency, you know. So if you're getting married to a non-believer, there will always be issues. There will always be. You see that you are you're trying to deny or you're trying to uh, what's the word to use now? You're trying to be oblivious of the fact that you're actually having issues or you are compromising. You're not living as a light, but if you're living as a genuine light, it can't work. And that, that term unequal yoke is when you take two animals that are not the same height and you put a yoke on their neck. This one will be going fast, this one will be going slow, this one will be moving, you know, that's what it means to be unequally yoke. And the Bible keeps saying it. And he emphasizes that in that second Corinthians 6, 14 to 18, he said, as light and darkness cannot fellowship together, Christ and darkness, I mean and Satan cannot work together. As the temple of God, you know, which is being inhabited by the Holy Spirit. You can maybe you did it as a non-believer. Yes, you have to pray for the salvation of your spouse. But as a believer, don't open your eyes. We can't say it enough. And go and marry somebody that is a born girl. Like, eh, is it born again? Uh, not really, but you know, he's a Christian, he goes to church. Mm -mm. You have to be sure. You have to be double double sure. You know, so those days we used to hear those stories where people say things like, eh. Um, I will, I will, I will convert him as if they are the Holy Spirit. You can't convert anybody, you. my sisters. You cannot convert anybody. God, God, God is the one that converts people. So you cannot, you cannot convert everybody. Yes, I'm seeing a comment here. You know, it doesn't mean that the person is not God fearing, but as a matter of fact, the scripture cannot be broken. If the Bible says, "Don't be unequally yoked with an unbeliever," don't be unequally yoked. That's just what it is. Of course, they might be okay people. They might be good people. Some of them are even more moral. But you know, how this our Christian work is not by morality. It's about the Holy Spirit. So somebody that does not have the Holy Spirit inside of him, how does he want to please God with you? Amen. How does the person want to please God? So even though the person is good, is nice, but he has to be a believer. Amen. You know, that's one thing I used to tell myself, even though, you know, people speak against me. I just say that the Bible says that except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Pa -pam, that's just the, that's just what it is. The person is born again. He sees God. He's not born again. does not see God. No matter how good he is, no matter how long he has even stayed in church, no matter how nice he is, even if they give him title or position or chief fancy in the church, if he's not born again, he's not born again. And then the Holy Spirit is not dwelling in him. So, because you know the Bible says that the Holy Spirit is our seal unto the perfect day. So when Jesus Christ comes, it's the Holy Spirit he will look at. That will be the mark on your head that he will use to, to take us away. So somebody that is not a believer might not be able to enjoy that. Praise the Lord. Yeah, so we're talking, we've talked about that. And it's just, you know, talking about that, I've talked about marriage, but then, you know, in so many dealings that we do, you know, sometimes it's tough, you know, even for me as a person, sometimes it's tough. Like sometimes when you call the Christian, I remember there was a time I used to have drivers that take me to work. And the first driver that I ever got was a church brother. Hey, he would just do funny things. And I got, I, I kept getting people from church and, you know, I was having issues with them. But that's work now. And then I now got this Muslim guy, Chai, you know, and he was so cool and calm and okay. And I'm like, why? Why can't Christian? So, but that's that's something for God to to work at. <coughs> Excuse.
excuse me. But one thing to know is that even when you now come in contact with a believer, maybe that your friend is not a be is not is now an unbeliever, or that your business associate is now an unbeliever, or that guy that is that you are not preaching the gospel so that you can marry him. Or no, our responsibility as ambassadors for the ministry of reconciliation is is for the ministry of reconciliation is to is to preach to them, to tell them to come to the saving knowledge of the grace of God, because God, you know. You know, somebody said that when you marry an unbeliever, God, God, God is your own father. Who is the father of the other person? You understand what I'm trying to say? So those are some of those things we need to learn. And that's what God is, God is just trying to tell us from, from today's study. That in our relationship, and it's not just about saying, oh, I'm light. I'm like, you have to show your light. Bible says, let your light so shine before men, that they may see your good work and glorify your Father which is in heaven. My prayer to God is that God will help us to really be ambassadors for him. It's something that I've been, you know, dealing with lately on a personal level now. And I'm sharing that, you know, sometimes I just say, God, am I really representing you everywhere? Now, when people look at me on the streets, around where I walk, can they really say that, wow, I want to be a Christian like Bumi? You know, I want to be a Christian like Juliana. You know, she's she's just such a Christian. I want to become a Christian. If that is not happening, then we need to check our lives. If all they keep telling you, you're looking beautiful, you're pretty, you're fine. And they never tell you, they've never asked you, what church do you attend? Wow, you sound like a Christian. Or, you know, something like that. They even go ahead and call you pastor, even when you're not. If that is not happening, I think that means we're not really representing ourselves as ambassadors. Because right now, you know, when you see the ambassadors of other countries, you see them. They will, they will wear the lapel, on their lapel pin, they will put the badge of their country, everything around them, their accents, everything would you know, show that they are believers. I pray God will help us you know, to really stand for him as ambassadors in our setting ourselves apart, knowing that we are ambassadors and we have a home to go back to, no matter what happens here on earth, to take care of our spirits more than our bodies, then also to go ahead and also you know, beyond that, minister the same gospel to the other people to come to Christ, then to also make sure that, you know, we are separating ourselves, we're separate, we're separating ourselves as, you know, as light away from the darkness of this world, not that in a particular place, everybody, both Christian and non-Christian, everybody is, you know, is, 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 is not really being shown as, you know, like there's nothing um, um, distinguishing us as a child of God. I pray that the Lord will give us understanding in Jesus' mighty name. I want to thank you so much for watching with us tonight. This is Amiable Women of Honor. It's actually a group of women from all over the world. We have people from, you know, Europe, America, Nigeria, and everywhere. And from all over Nigeria as well. It's just a group of godly women that believe that they want to maximize their potential by becoming a Proverbs 31 woman. So we do several things. You know, and one of it is this Bible study <coughs> that we're done tonight. But before we go ahead and talk about all the other programs we have, I want us to just, you know, take our time and pray. And just as believers, let's just tell God, Father, help me to be an ambassador indeed for you. Help me, Lord, to be an ambassador indeed for you. Everywhere I go, everything I do, wherever I find myself, let that mark of this distinction be upon me. That everywhere I go, I will, I will shine like a light for everyone to see that indeed I'm a child of God. Father, I receive that grace tonight. In Jesus. I mean, if you are here tonight, you are not even born again at all. Come, come. We want you to come and join the fold. So that we all can be light together. So that we can all shine. So I want you to, you know, pray this prayer with me. And tell the Lord that, Father, I come to you today. I have received Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. I acknowledge today that he is my Father. And I give myself to him. Come into my heart, Holy Spirit. And make your dwelling in me. In Jesus' mighty name, I have prayed. So if you have prayed that prayer, tomorrow is Sunday. Try and go to a Bible-believing church around you. And if you don't know where to go or you don't know how to go on as a Christian, just chat us up here and we will we will guide you on how to go about it. Thank you so much for joining tonight. And before I go, I just want to remind you that we have prayer meetings every Sunday. Sometimes you you don't want to. I don't even know I've spent this long time. I was just enjoying myself. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. So on Sunday, we have prayer meetings. We do the prayer meetings on Zoom. We share the, the, the invites on this platform, Amiable Men of Honor, and we also share the broadcast. So if you can't join us on Zoom, you can join us on this broadcast. Every Sunday we have prayers. Some other Sundays we have you know, business talk and we have um, health talk. Some other Sundays. And 
then during the week we go through this bible study like today now we've gone through the study of another some other chapters of the scripture you know to bless us we do that during the week we also have real life issues that we discuss we have a whatsapp group where we just so you can just reach out to us and join us it's just you know we just trust god as women we can come together and maximize our potentials so that's all for me today i want to thank everybody that joined i saw quite some few people here um one of honor are they are Man of honor, sister, Auntie Bimbo. I like you calling, calling you that. Oh, Nepa again. Yes, um, thank you so much for coming in. Thank you so much for joining tonight. Man of honor with me and everybody that come. Thank you so much. So I'll see you, i see everybody here tomorrow on Sunday by 8 o'clock when we have prayers. God bless you and have a wonderful night. Bye. Sorry, apologies for the light. <laughs> have a good night. Bye-bye.